like I said earlier, when I do custom work, it's, it's really about connecting to that person. Like I've made globes for people that are cancer survivors. I've made globes for like in memory of people's loved ones and like just the opportunity to do that. I'm like, it's worth it to me. It's worth it when people want me to do something so special and that they can afford it. Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and this week I'm talking to Corey Harris, who's walking us through a step-by-step lesson on how to letter and paint on a globe, which is super interesting because I get the question all the time about how to letter on a rounded surface, and Corey just knocks it out of the park with this. So let's jump right in. Corey, welcome to the show. Hey, Becca. Thanks for having me. So excited to have you on here. I feel like this is one of the most like impromptu lessons that I've ever, <laughs> I've ever done or that I've ever set up, but I just like came across your work and was instantly like, oh my God, we need to do a lesson on this. Yeah, um, well, I'm so happy. Yeah. So for people who might not know you, can you give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do, what all those beautiful globes behind you are? (laughs) Yeah. Um, My name is Corey and I am 28 and I started painting right after I graduated from college. I do have a full-time job and I work full-time as a volleyball coach at my university. So I had this like competitive outlet that I never really had a creative outlet. And I feel like that's how creatives start. They needed that outlet to to kind of get it all out but it became a little bit of therapeutic and it became like something I could do that brought me a lot of joy and then it all started when someone said they wanted to buy one and then I was like oh I can I can do something with this but I started by painting on canvases and then I moved to globes sort of randomly so my great aunt is a school teacher and my mom went to go clean out her basement she had all sorts of school teacher stuff, desk, she had globes, she had all these things and she brought them back home. And I had an in-person craft show and I had all these canvases and they were colorful and they were pretty. And I brought this globe that I like kind of like fixed up a little bit. I just spray painted it and wrote some cute words on. And at my craft show, every single person stopped and they're like, oh, I love that globe, I love that globe. I was like, well, I have all these canvases too. And people were just so drawn to the globes. So I just sort of went with it. I leaned in and I I kept painting more and more globes. And then I got more requests for like different colors and different sayings. And it just is something different that kind of stretches me creatively. And now I do like 90% custom order globes and very few canvases, but it's still, it's still fun just to paint these and then paint canvases too to just mix it up but yeah yeah that was going to be my next question was how it went from doing like obviously you knew how to do art and Mm -hmm. painting and stuff before and maybe like lettering too Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're doing globes and I was wondering how much of what you do is actually globes because it seems like that's all over your social media it's all over your website your shop and everything I well I did canvases for a while and I started doing globes and then I started to just mainly do globes just because I feel most comfortable in those and I haven't taken like any official lessons I'm really self-taught but it's kind of fun to learn something new and just kind of embrace it but yeah 90% globes um most of my customers are teachers which I really love working with teachers so um but yeah, 90, 90% globes, I'd say, and 90% custom orders. I really try to um, work with people and that really helps me stay connected to the person that's buying them. Yeah, they could, I feel like uh, people are drawn to those because they could be so personalized. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Um, I know like we are, obviously you're going to do a little lesson for us on this and Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for that because I feel like a lot of people often ask me how to letter and how to like paint and draw on curved surfaces. Oh yeah. I'm I'm sure you're going to touch on that. But my other question was, um, I know you said for the first little while you were getting these globes from your, is it your great aunt? Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. But where do you get them all now? That's like the number one question. Yeah. So I wrote down a list because a lot of people ask if I have like a production partner or if I buy them in bulk and I don't. Um, One, I'm a really small, small business. It's just me and my mom helps me from time to time. But I do have my interns. So I have friends. I have family. I have my husband. I have extended people that wherever they go, if they see a globe, they take a picture and like, is this good? Is this good? So 
I look Hobby Lobby always has globes. Michael's always has globes. Walmart has them. Um, places like Ross has them. Um, Goodwill, you can go to the thrift store, you can find some there. Amazon, eBay, it's all over. I don't get them at one singular place. And the other thing about that is when I go to the, these places, you have to find the right globe. You're not going to want to paint over an antique globe because one, it might hurt your soul a little bit to paint over a nice globe like that. And two, they're a little bit too worn down. Like if they're broken, it's going to, it's not going to look good when the paint goes over it. So when you're shopping, I typically shop for new globes. And that's why like a Michaels and a Hobby Lobby and a Ross, they have newer, like newer produced globes, not necessarily the older ones. So what would you say is like the average price of one of the globes mm. that you buy? Because I, and I'm, I'm not talking like after you've painted it, like what people oh, pay no, for no. it, but the ones that you buy, because I feel like every time I see globes in a store, they're like super expensive. And maybe I'm, I just keep running across the antique, like pretty ones, but I mm -hmm. feel like what, I'm, and when I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking like um, Indigo, which I don't think you guys have that store, but like Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble sort of this. Oh yeah. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Those are always so insanely expensive so what's kind of the average price so when when i talk to my interns um i say twenty dollars or less that's the that's the sweet spot so i have all different sizes so i have like this is like the smallest size i have it's about the size of my hand these ones i'll spend ten dollars on but i know they're good quality i've actually dropped these before and they're still okay um, and then I have a slightly bigger size. I'll spend up to $10 on these. Um, then I have an even bigger size and I'll spend up to $15 on those. And then the big ones, the ones that you'll find like in antique malls, um, this size, you can find these cheaper, which is insane. If you go to like a Goodwill or an antique mall and you find a nice quality one that's not actually antique you can find them for 10 bucks so it doesn't make sense but the smaller ones are sometimes more expensive than the bigger ones but um i would say under 20 dollars is my sweet spot but sometimes you can't find them and that's why sometimes i have more in stock and sometimes i have less in stock i, I just had this thought as we were talking about where to find these two if people are struggling to find them i was mm -hmm. recently added to a facebook group for like my community my neighborhood uh -huh or like Facebook groups for your city or whatever. I feel like a lot of those allow you to like ask neighbors if they have any. And I, oh, yeah. I think that a lot of the like older people in my neighborhood probably <laughs> have globes like your great aunt did sitting in the oh, yeah. basement. So I feel like if, if anybody's watching this and is wondering like, oh my God, how can I find one? I don't want to spend all this money on it. I bet you somebody has one that they'd be willing to just give you that's sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, shop your house first and then and then check your neighbors. I've gotten some on like Craigslist too. Yeah. Um, just how however you feel about getting them. But yeah, sometimes I tell my husband, like, you don't realize where all these globes are until you pay attention and then you start seeing them everywhere. Like yeah. in the background of movies. Like once you train your brain to like go on the treasure hunt for them, like you'll see them in movies or in the background of TV shows, and you're like, oh, globe. So it is kind of fun to go hunt for them too. It's part of the yeah. part of the process. All right, so let's get started. So if you have a globe, I'm gonna use this really small one to start with, but I will say that the smaller the globe, the more difficult it is to kind of write those fine details. So it might seem counterintuitive, but if you have a bigger globe, I would start there. The bigger the surface, the easier it is for you to write your details. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our globe and we're gonna decide what colors we wanna use. So I'm actually gonna paint this entire globe. I'm gonna paint the stand and I'm gonna paint the map. But there's some parts of this globe that I don't wanna paint. Um, most of the time, these globes have this top piece and this bottom piece and it's made out of metal. And I wanna cover that up before I even put any sort of paint to the globe. So this would be your prep. Um, so before you even start step one, you gotta prep your globes. Some globes are metal too, so you might wanna sand those down. This one isn't, this one's like a wood. Um, and then some globes might need a little repair, so you might have to just check the map and make sure that there's no rips or tears. But the first thing I'm gonna do is put this blue painter's tape over this metal part. So that way you're not getting any paint on it. Nothing fancy. And you'll repeat down on the bottom too. So what I would normally do is I would take this outside somewhere nice and ventilated and then I would start with some spray paint. 
Um, Rust-Oleum is my favorite brand of spray paint. Not all spray paint is created equal. And I just think that's because the nozzle that you use can sometimes get clogged up easily. So you'll take this outside and you'll start to spray paint the globe. Tips for spray painting the globe though, is you wanna keep your spray can like six to eight inches away and you wanna do light, quick layers. Um, sometimes if you spray paint like heavily on just to cover it up right away, it could end up pooling at the bottom and then it'll it'll have weird textures and it just won't look smooth once it's finished. So take your time, do it in layers. Um, the biggest thing about this project is you wanna set aside maybe a couple days. So I'm gonna walk you through each step, but each step might take a couple days because this has to dry completely before you can start the next step. So take your time, spray paint from nice and far away, do layers, come back, add another layer. Usually, depending on what color your stand is and what color you want it to be, it could take two, maybe three coats. So spray paint set aside for one day at least, maybe two days. All right, and for this globe, we're gonna do this hot pink. So I actually spray painted this globe two days ago, and because of this color, it's still like just a little tacky to the touch. So that's why you need to make sure that you're not in a humid climate, or if it is sitting outside, you can bring it inside and put it in front of a fan. So then next step is I'm going to take off the tape that we sort of covered up before. All right, and if you can see, I did get paint all on the map of the globe, but that's okay. But it's not in this little metal part, which kind of keeps that nice and clean. Um, so yeah, so now we've got our stand painted. The next step I'm gonna use is I'm going to paint the map of the globe. So let's talk about the supplies for the paint um, on the globe. I typically use a really inexpensive craft paint. Now, here's the thing. When you want to use a nicer, higher quality paint, it tends to take a lot more coats. This is going to take a lot of coats to begin with, but the nicer paint is not meant to cover up um, what you're doing. It's meant to go on a nice canvas that you're paying a lot of money for. So I'm actually using paint, um, either craft paint or wall paint. Um, if you use wall paint, I would use like a flat or matte finish and then um, that way you can kind of paint over top and not worry about it being glossy. But yes, so stick to the craft paint and stick to the wall paint because you're going to end up using a lot of that expensive high-end acrylic paint if you, if you go that route. So I'm going to use this craft paint to start with and I'm going to cover the whole globe. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do this. Sometimes I sort of outline the countries. So if your map has a really clear outline of the countries, you could paint the water one color, and then you could paint the countries another color. But for me, I'm gonna paint the whole globe one color. I really like this like pale blue. This is a chalk paint, I think. Um, not necessary, you could use any sort of paint, but I like this chalk paint just because of the finish and it's really, really opaque. Um, the other thing too is when you're thinking about colors to pick for your globe, you kind of want your stand and your map to contrast. That'll yield like a really pretty result. Um, I love this pink and like light blue combo. I think it works really well. So when you're painting the actual map, you wanna use a nice thick brush and you wanna do small strokes back and forth instead of trying to cover the whole thing right away. Just take your time. It's gonna take a lot of layers as you go. So as you can see, you would just let this dry and then you would do the back and just keep going and see the parts that I've actually spray painted over. This will cover it up nicely. Okay, so as you can see, this is layer one. I like to do probably about two, if not more layers, just to make this feel completely finished. And you want that to be completely dry before you even start the next coat. So I'll let that dry. And then you'll put your brush in water. You don't want your brushes to dry out. All right, the next step revolves, or the next step involves a little bit of prep so you want to feel really confident about your design that you're going to put on the globe here's the design that we're going to try to put on today 
But I think it's important to feel really confident in your lettering skills before you even start putting it on the globe. And I think the type of lettering that you want to do, it could be like your faux calligraphy, or it could just be regular old print handwriting. But you might want to start by sort of mapping it out or drawing it out. It's really great to take some lessons. I know Becca has some great lessons that you could take. All right, so if I want to start with this design, I would sort of map out what I want it to look like on the paper first. So if you've got an idea in your head or if you maybe see something on Pinterest or just a good quote, there's tons of like happy world quotes or earth quotes. I know peace on earth is a really good one, um, anything. So the first thing you want to do is sort of sketch out what you want. And the way I sketch things out is I actually start with the word I want to make the biggest first. So this was um, the design that we're working with. So see how world is like the biggest word. So that's the one I really start with. And then I work from there to kind of make the design. So I know I want like less meaningful words to be a little bit smaller and the more meaningful words to be a little bit bigger. So I sort of map that out. There's the general idea. So you wanna make sure that when you're mapping it out, you're making it as small as the globe that you're putting on, just so you get a feel for like how your pen would feel and how your paint is gonna feel once you do the lettering. So that's kind of what I want. If you do happen to have an iPad or an iPad Pro, you can do this digitally as well. You can tweak it, you can work with it, and just um, until you find the design that you like. Sometimes it's not always the first design that you come up with, and this is what I do for people who are interested in custom orders, I kind of sketch out one to like four different designs because you never know if somebody wants this word a little bit bigger or this word a little bit differently. So if we come back to our globe, we've got our design sketch here. This is a dried um, map and a dry stand, so it's all ready to go. The next supply or tool that is gonna be really helpful for you guys is one of these paint pens. I like to use the Posca paint pens and I like to use a fine tip. This is the key. Um, I draw everything with these paint pens first. If you draw it with a pencil, it's going to be a lot harder to adjust. So yes, a pencil can erase, but when it erases, it smears. And if you're writing it and if you're not erasing it, it still smears. So I say, get rid of the pencil, it's done, and then use this paint pen for everything. Um, this is actually really great on these chalk paint surfaces because I can just wipe it off with a wet cloth and you won't even see it anymore. So you're gonna start by taking your lettering and taking your Posca pen, the fine tip one, and you're gonna start putting your design on the globe. So the way I even set this up is the same every single time. You may not even notice it, but the stand of the globe is on the left side every single time. So I never paint a globe with the stand on the right. So, and maybe that's just personal preference. If you like a globe to stand up like that, then that's power to you. But I really like the stand of the globe on the left. I think it just looks better. So start by positioning that with the stand on the left. And then I really hold all my globes in my hand. I always do that. I think it helps. I never really paint with it like standing up like this. That would be sort of uncomfortable to do. So I always start with the globe in my hand. Sometimes it's in my lap, whatever you do to feel comfortable. So if you're not comfortable completely holding it in your hand, you can find something else to sort of set your globe in. Obviously you can't really set it on the table because it'll roll over. But if you've got like a roll of tape or something with a surface, maybe even those like soft, floral foam holders you can really just press it in there but this works just as well and you don't have to worry about holding it and it's not going to roll anywhere so once you've got your globe all set up and you've got your lettering designer again you're going to start by using word so like the main emphasis word is the first word i'm going to letter on here um quick check make sure there's not any paint on your hands make sure there's no pencil marks in the original design and then you can get right to work um, and I'm sure if you practice lettering, go slow, go slow, go slow. It's not worth it to just rush through it. So I'm going to do the main emphasis of the word right in the middle of the globe. And I'm just going to do it in regular lettering. And then I'll come back and fill in and make the letters thicker. All 
All right, once you've got your main word kind of lettered on there, then you start to fill in the gaps. So I know I'm going to put these two words up here. This next um, three word or four words is going to be directly underneath, but I want to make sure I have enough room so I'm not going too far to the bottom. So I'm going to give myself just a little space. All right, almost halfway through or over halfway. The next word that I'm going to do in this little calligraphy is the word anything. And I want to kind of map out in my head um probably about an inch i want to give myself an inch here to do the next word so and i know from looking at my design that i want to start it somewhere underneath the h and have it end right around the e of the words before it all right our quote is almost done it's looking centered it's looking good the last two words are going to be directly under the N and then the H-I-N over here. All right, so we've got it all lettered on with this pen. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is do sort of my faux calligraphy where you thicken the downstrokes of the letter. Now, you are going to paint these letters. You're not going to just draw them all, but you, you could if you wanted to, but we are going to paint the letters, but I find it a lot easier if I sort of map out thicker strokes are going to be before I hit the paintbrush. Um, it just helps me follow a line, which is a little bit easier than just doing it um, based on the pressure of my paintbrush. So I sort of map out where I want the strokes to be thicker and where I want the strokes to be thinner. And I always use this white pen, even though for this final globe, the color is gonna be in um, a dark pink. All right, so now I've got my design lettered on here. Now you noticed I picked up the globe kind of a lot and it helps when you're holding it to kind of be able to move it as you go too. So that way you're not just constantly holding it in one spot and trying to move your hand, you're moving the globe as you're writing. So I think that helps too. But once you've got your design lettered on with these pens, it's pretty much dry so you can get right to painting. So the next step would be to grab really fine, thin paintbrushes. I use just any old craft paintbrushes because I do tend to go through them a lot and they tend to wear out kind of quickly. Um, and we're using craft paint as well. So those tend to wear out the brushes too. All right, we're gonna get our paint palette out and start to get our colors out. So we're actually gonna letter first the um, main words and then we'll go back over the smaller words first. And I do a mixture of this faux calligraphy and print just because I think it adds dimension to the globe. You could do faux calligraphy the whole globe or you could do print the whole globe, but I think it mixes, when you mix it up, the design looks a little bit cooler at the end. So. We're gonna start by lettering the main words. And this is just red craft paint here. Like I said, the cheaper the better because you're gonna go through it a lot and it's gonna take a lot of coats and then you can use a little bit nicer paint on the finer details, but the base coats can be that nice affordable craft paint. Okay, so this is where you need either another surface to put your globe in or you can hold it. So I'm gonna bring out my tape just to keep it nice and steady. And I'm using a really, really fine tip paintbrush. The finer or the thinner the tip, the better, just because you can always make things thicker, but you can't really make things thinner. So go slow and use a small paintbrush. So we're gonna start the same way we started with the design, and I'm gonna start by painting the main word. Just a small amount of paint on the end. You don't wanna put too much paint on your paintbrush. And then you're gonna work only in the down strokes. So that part that we actually mapped out first, we're just gonna fill it in and go nice and slow. And I do all the downstrokes first. This helps like kind of keep a nice process. So I'm not going from thick to thin, thick to thin. It's just all the thick strokes first and then doing all the thin strokes.
All right, and then we're going to go back over the thinner strokes. So this paintbrush, I really used kind of two widths of this paintbrush to do the thicker strokes. So the thinner stroke will be like one width of this paintbrush. So go slow, keep your paintbrush down on the globe the entire time. Try not to do the sort of, I'll show you on this side, the feather technique. So when you letter, you don't want to like try to do that. You really want to create a continuous line the whole way. Because even though you can make this thicker, it just won't look as smooth as the finished product. So when we do the thin line, keeping our paintbrush down and just doing one thickness of our thin brush. All right, and now we've got our first word done. We'll move on to our second word. So you would do this same photography effect down here on this smaller word too, but let me briefly show you how to paint over the print as well. So I'm gonna use a really bright white. There's a lot of different color paints of white. Um, you wanna make sure you get the brightest, no tint in it, and that'll turn out the best on the globe too. So when you do, the print. I actually think it's harder to do print than it is to do like your cursive just because this is so straight and there's a lot of pressure to keep the straight lines going. So very similar to what we did with the thin strokes here. I always like to work my way up. So even though when you're writing this, you're writing down every time with a pen, when I paint it, I always paint up. I just think it's more natural for me and that sort of helps it helps keep your paintbrush steady. It helps keep the paint down. So again, I'm putting just a little bit of paint on the end of this brush and I paint all my print up. Trying to keep the same sort of pressure the whole time. So not globbing it at the end or pushing down too hard at the beginning and lifting up. So I always paint sort of an up direction wherever I am, even on like O's and R's, I always paint up even if there's a curve to it. And I think that helps make it look straight. So then the tricky part is um, working on this one here in between like two letters, two words. All right, now I'm gonna work up. And this is why it helps to hold it because obviously I can't work up if the globe is standing up like this. It's just unnatural. So I kind of hold it and I really tilt it at an angle. So that way working up is a lot easier. All right, and then once you've got your lettering mostly done, you want to do another coat. So as you can see, um, the lettering here looks a little streaky. So you're going to want to do two, maybe three coats, depending on the color. And it also depends on the background color too. So this light blue um, really does work well with the white because it's light on light. But if it's a darker color and light, it's going to take more coats. Just like if you were painting a wall, um, you'd have to do a couple more coats if you're trying to change the difference of the colors by a lot. All right, and then we're going to work on the last step, which is adding a design to the globe. So when I think about the designs on the globe, this is a 360 degree canvas. So it's really important to figure out what you want to paint and then what you want to leave alone. So I rarely paint the backs of the globes. I really paint just the front and then like sort of the perimeter around the lettering. And that's what I do the design on most of the time. If people ask me to do a design on the back, I will. But most of the time, this is just standing straight up and not many people are going up and touching it because it's painted and you don't want to touch something usually if it's painted. So for this design, I'm gonna do some flowers, some really easy flowers, a little bit of glitter, and just doing that all the way around the globe and right around the lettering. And then as you can see, the back of this globe is blank. But you can fill it in if you really wanted to.
All right, there you go. You've got a painted globe with some lettering, with some glitter. You can send it home. Um, I'm always here if you have any questions. I love painting these globes, but it can be a labor of some time. So be patient. That's awesome. I honestly really am wishing that I have a, had a globe in my house right now, but <laughs> I'm, I'm on lockdown, so I'm not going to go out to get one, but yeah. I, I'm looking forward to trying that whenever I'm allowed to go Yay. get one. Here's my question. I, well, and I think I might know the answer, but I want to hear your answer to see if I'm right. So um, okay. what if, and I think people were probably wondering this, what if you paint your globe, like the base color, and then you start working on it mm -hmm. with your pens or your paint or whatever, and you screw up? Yeah, so it's always good to have your paint, like your base color paint, and you just touch it up. Um, I make so many mistakes. I smear a lot, but you have to let it completely dry first. So you don't want to go over a mistake right away. I know it's like the urge to do that right away is always there, but you want to let it dry and then go back over it with color and you want to do it really thin. So let's say, for example, I had a smear like right here. I don't just want to like dot where the mistake is. I want to take a nice flat paintbrush. So something with like a wide edge and then go back over it and just do layers and layers and just be patient. Yeah. Okay. So I, I assumed that it was a matter of using the base coat again, which is like actually takes a lot yeah. of the pressure off. Cause you know, you can fix it if you screw up, but that's a good point mm -hmm. about waiting for it to dry. Cause I'm the impatient person who would try to just oh, go yeah. over it. And then you end up just mixing the colors together and just getting a disaster. So that's good to know. Oh, it comes um, from experience. So yeah. I messed it up a bunch and then I realized just let it dry. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. So, thank you so much for the lesson. Yeah, I feel like people are going to really you. enjoy that. I would love for people to give it a try if they have a globe at home. And if not, wait, wait until they're not uh, isolating to go and get one. Um, but if people do that and if they take a picture or anything, where can they tag you? Where can they show you their work? Where can people just find more from you in general? Yeah. You can find me on Instagram at Corey Harris art. I sell all my globes on Etsy, so try it and you don't ever try it again. Um, you can find my art on Etsy at Corey Harris Art there too. And I just started TikToking. It's, I'm trying, I'm getting there, but I'm also Corey Harris Art on TikTok. But, and that I show a little bit of the process on there too, but um, I do more like behind the scenes stuff on my Instagram. Good to know. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, Corey, it was lovely to meet you. Thank you so much again for the lesson. And uh, me too. I look forward to seeing more of your beautiful globes on. Actually, I'm on TikTok too, so maybe I'll see you over there. <laughs> it feels weird saying TikTok too. <laughs> <laughs>